Good evening, everyone. I am going to call us uh, back to order, um, returning to open session for the April 10th, 2023 Hingham School Committee meeting. And so fortunately, I get to read the following message now that we do have remote participation available. <laughs> Sorry for the delay in getting started. Um, this meeting is being held in person and or remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 and all other applicable laws temporarily amending certain provisions of open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may re be recorded by the Town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please <coughs> notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20F, so the chair may inform other participants of said recording. Harbor Media is here tonight recording. As always, thank you, Harbor Media. Um, we are recording on Zoom. Is anyone in the audience recording? No? All right, well, that's great. Thank you very much for being here, everyone. Um, I'm gonna do the first order of business is going to be a school showcase. Dr. Adams, do you want to do the introductions? Sure, I'm glad to welcome Mr. Swanson and his team of students tonight um, in our third installment of our um, school showcase with Hingham High School. And we're glad to have um, some great spokespeople here tonight to speak about what's happening at the high school. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you, Dr. Adams, and thank you, everybody on the school committee for the invitation to be here tonight. And happy to tell you that you won't have to listen to me for very long. My only role here is to introduce an all-star cast of six Hingham High School students. We decided that a good way to showcase uh, some of the exciting work that's happened at the high school this year would be to identify, given the time constraints of 15 minutes, we could have probably filled a much longer section of time to give you a highlight reel of life at Hingham High School this year. But we, we settled on six key areas to talk to you about and, and six students to be spokespeople for those issues. The first is uh, some highlights from the life of our 50 plus clubs at Hingham High School with a particular focus on Unity Project and some of the work around the, the recently held Unity Week. You're gonna hear from Jasper Lee, Hingham High School senior about that. And then he's gonna turn it over to Abby Benyon, a senior uh, as well, to talk about developments in art then Tim Bevins will talk to us about the highlights from the Drama Club this year, uh, including some still to come. Then we'll hear from Lana Lucas about music, um, Caroline Schiffman about athletics, and Evan Doherty about the birth of the Red Army and uh, record levels of school spirit at Hingham High School this year. So uh, here they are, and we'll start with Jasper. Good morning. It not <laughs> That's a good start, isn't it? Uh, well, as Principal Swanson just mentioned, we do have. Oh. Okay. I'm off to a great start. <laughs> Only up from here. Uh, so we do have more than 50 clubs, so I can't go through them all. These the highlights. Uh, we do have a quiz bowl team, and they made it to the WGBH quiz show, and they fought against uh, Lexington High School, and they actually were on WGBH a few weeks ago. We actually have a couple members right there uh, that I'm looking at. Uh, and then our HHS robotics team excelled at the Southeastern Massachusetts first robotics competition. They went to the third round of the playoffs, and they did an excellent job with their robot. Our Model UN team went to Harvard Model UN conference, which is uh, internationally known. Students from around the world go to the Harvard Model United Nations conference, and they did a great job uh, representing the nation of Jordan at the Harvard Model United Nations conference. Then, of course, we have the Veterans Appreciation Club, which is a great example of student-initiated uh, community leadership and community service, and they do a great job raising funds for veterans groups and raising awareness about veterans' issues. And then we have the HHS Unity Project. It's about three years old, and it is continuing to make progress on school climate uh, and the spirit of welcome at Hingham High School. Uh, so there have been a couple of new initiatives this year. During the World Cup this year, uh, we held multiple events throughout that month uh, that the World Cup was being held in. Uh, we had a bracket, and there was a lot of school spirit around uh, our events at the World Cup. The Adopted Island Initiative, where uh, different clubs or teams adopt a little area of space and clean it up and make our campus more beautiful, has been off to a great start. Uh, we're looking to expanding it in the spring. There's a lot of uh, different organizations in the school that are looking to adopt more islands. Uh, so we do have, oh, and here's some pictures of, some, of a group that participated. 
So we had another Unity Week uh, that went great, and we had some events during that Unity Week. We had Origination, a dance group come to perform at Hingham High School. Uh, we had a barbecue dinner, and of course, a lot of this was thanks to some grants that we got, uh, thanks to our excellent Metco director, Director Jackson, uh, who has done a great job uh, helping with that, along with other um, events. And we had student leadership when the students held uh, ninth grade advisory meetings during that Unity Week. And this one happened last week, I believe. Uh, we had the third annual 42 Games of Catch. We had more people than ever, and it was a great success. I think that we might have actually achieved it. Uh, and that was uh, great on Jackie Robinson Day. I will pass it off to Abby Benyon. Uh, hi, I'm Abby Benyon. And um, I've participated in a lot of the arts classes. Um, left, left, left. left click? Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one thing that we're really excited about that is new this year is that we um, have a new department director for um, the arts, um, who is Ms. Bellis, and she's been doing a great job. Um, more recently, we've gotten something called, started up called um, the Art Pathways Program, which we're really excited for, which will make more, it more accessible for students in the arts to continue on in the future and find careers, which I'm really excited about personally because I really wish that that had been available to me as I had been progressing through high school. Um, one of the, earlier in this year, we had our December art show, and these are some examples of the pieces that were hung up from, these are mostly um, senior pieces um, and then we also have some of the photography works on the right um, from Mr. Isho's class. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm just gonna, we can come back to this in a minute. <laughs> uh, It looks like some of my slides are missing. <laughs> um, okay, it looks like none of my slides loaded earlier today, but I'll just describe it and you can imagine how awesome our arts program is. And luckily, you'll have a chance to see it for yourself um, coming up later this month, actually, for the, in our April showcase. Um, we're going to have advanced students from all of our classes in the ceramics department and our drawing and painting and our photography and all of our art classes. We're having a show on April 27th. That's a f Friday, I think. Thursday or Friday. Put it on your calendars. It's really, it's going to be so great, I promise. Um, but let me just describe the classes to you that you're going to, you can expect to see there. Um, Starting off with ceramics, we've got a very wonderful ceramics teacher, Mrs. Puga, who has, um, we, main, we have two main pathways for ceramic students, um, wheel throwing, which you're, we're going to have a demonstration of at the art showcase upcoming, and also hand building, which I've been more recently working in, which is great. Um, we've got a lot of talented students, as well as an AP portfolio, or an AP studio class, sorry, um, that will be showing off a lot of work at this exhibit. Um, we also have um, mixed media, which is very unique to our um, school. Not a lot of, t you're gonna see a lot of techniques in those pieces that not a lot of schools um, do, like embellishment. Um, and we also have great, um, we also have um, a portfolio class for our for the most advanced um, like senior level classes. I'm in that right now, and um, most of the stuff you can see from our December showcase is in that realm. So, yeah, uh, I don't have any of my other slides unfortunately, but definitely come to our showcase later this month. Be happy to see you all there. Uh, yeah, thank you.
All right. Oh, I think I'm missing some pictures as well, but that's okay. We'll make do. Um, I'm Tim Bevins. I'm in the Drama Club and just wanted to highlight some things that went on this past year. Um, our festival marked our first full year with Miss Fish as our director. Um, last year, she led us all the way to the final round of festival. Um, and so we've been extremely, extremely grateful to have four or five more productions with her since then. Um, so this fall, uh, we did The Music Man, and um, this was uh, a sneak performance from the Hingham Arts Alliance uh, Arts Walk, um, which was super fun just to get to show off a couple um, numbers from the show before. Um, yep, this is, so I think just one of the things that's changed tremendously over the past year is the culture, um, not only in the drama club, but with all of like the other arts and stuff we've been able to get uh, Mr. Isho and graphic design involved to make our our gorgeous poster that we had um, earlier um, and just helping kind of bind the arts communities together. Um, this was our in-school preview which was uh, super fun so we get to do um, an X block where we just carve out a little section of the day um, and do a couple performances from the musical for uh, the student body. This is that uh, festival this year. We did Caucasian Shock Circle. Um, and then this was at the uh, preliminary round, which we won, and several acting and um, technical excellence awards for Hingham as well, which was super awesome and very impressive. And then round two also um, took home a couple more awards, um, and it was just a great, a great run of a great show. Oh yeah, missing some missing some pictures definitely. This year for our spring play, we're we're doing um, two um, one acts. We're doing um, too many daughters and the importance of being earnest. And both of them are uh, comedies of manners, comedy of manners uh, style, which I like to describe as 1800 satire. Um, <laughs> and it's super fun, and it's going to be a great spring, and so much more to come as well. Thank you. Now I don't know if my slides will load. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> All right, so um, in addition to kicking off the new school year with a fi new fine arts director, we also um, got three new music electives, which were awesome. We have Songwriting Studio, which is a class that teaches students tech tools and techniques used in like popular songs. And then they learn to create their own songs with no musical experience required at all. We also have Music Appreciation, which is a semester-long class that showcases the histories of different musical genres and um, gets students to just um, hone their listening techniques um, and just try to appreciate different types of genres of music that aren't as popular. And then we have the Intro to Piano class, which is the pictures on the slide <laughs> here, um, where any st um, students with any level of any experience um, playing the piano can come up and learn how to play the piano from scratch or just... Um, get um, learn new techniques on how to play and it was just a really um, nice addition to our already ex um, expansive elect elective courses um, ooh. for concert season we just um, we had a little private fall concert in the beginning of the year just to um, do a little community like building exercises but then we had our winter concerts which were um, with mixed chorus and concert chorale chorus I believe um, freshman orchestra and um, um, sorry an upperclassman orchestra and then uh, wind ensemble and concert band and then we had our chamber concerts we had our jazz night um, and we just recently had all town this March which was um, a concert that featured all of the Hingham Public Schools um, music players, which was nice. Um, we also had a bunch of select musicians go to Stemsba, which was a district-wide um, selective um, audition festival. And then um, upcoming concerts, we have our spring concert for chorus band and orchestra. We have our jazz night, our chamber concerts. Um, we're playing at the graduation and also Memorial Day. Um, <laughs> I'm also missing some pictures here. Um, we have um, a lot of commitment here in the band program and the orchestra and chorus program. We have Chamber Winds, which is uh, an audition group that meets every Thursday night um, after school. And we have a jazz program that meets um, every Tuesday night after school. Um, and we also do a lot of other things outside the school like Memorial Day and Veterans Day. Ooh, that was all time. 
And then we've also um, been trying to spread band and, and co um, chorus and orchestra into all different par parts of the school, which includes singing the national anthem. Um, you might have seen them, our men's chorus at the, I think, one of our last home wrestling games um, they sang at. And then um, our HSS band has been playing at pe pep rallies, and we recorded our the national anthem for that as well. Hello. Hello. Is it on? Okay. Hello. My, oh, okay. No worries. My name is Caroline Schiffman, and I'm a senior at Hingham High, and I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit about the athletics program this year. Uh, I'd just like to start off by saying that during my four years at Hingham High, I think that the athletics program has been an incredible community in which we should all definitely be proud of. Um, so to start, one of the stories that got a lot of attention this year was the girls' soccer team winning the state championship. And as a player on that team, it was definitely a surreal experience that our entire school took great pride in. And I think that the support that we received from our town was honestly incredible. But however, this was just one small part of a much bigger picture. Um, we saw success across the board in just about every speed sport that's competed so far. And I'm confident that the spring sports will continue to raise the bar for the Hingham Athletic Program. So to start off with some of our athletic highlights. We had the Hingham High School wrestling team who had a great year. Uh, one player in particular, Mia Deenan, placed second in her weight class at the Massachusetts Girls Statewide um, Wrestling Tournament this past February, which was an awesome accomplishment. Our coaching staff also foresaw great success, and this year Hingham High was the only team in the state to have two MIAA Coach of the Year awards. We are super proud of both Miss Dedrickson, um, the girls' track coach, and Mr. Caniff, the boys' wrestling coach, for excelling both as coaches and as teachers. Awesome people. And then on that note, we also had two more coaches, Coach Carlin, the boys' varsity soccer coach, who won his 300th game this season, and then Coach um, Niffin, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, um, the boys' basketball coach, who, as you can see, his team is super excited for him after he won his 200th career victory. Um, so I think that this these coaches award just kind of sh like sh go to show that how um, much our coaches at Hingham all care for our sports programs and how like they really have a true love for their um, passion sports. Yeah. Okay. Moving on with great coaches, we also had great group of leaders for every sport, and I think this is largely attributed to the captains classes that Coach Q has recently implemented at the high school. Um, and these are taught by Coach Q and Coach Pace before school, and they've been super great workshops to help give us, uh, the captains at the high school, knowledge about leadership and the importance of being captain on a sports team. Personally, I loved these classes and felt like they totally changed my perspective on what it means to be a leader, both in my sport but also just in real life. And I know it was really cool. This past winter, we actually had former Red Sox catcher Jason Veritek come in and talk to the winter sports captains about his own experience as a captain, so I really just think that these classes have like opened a ton of doors for us as players and just as people. And then another sports team who also had a record year were the uh, girls hockey team. They had a memorable season with their new first year head coach and made it all the way to the Elite Eight where they put up a hard fight and made Hingham proud. Um, but at the end of the day, at Hingham High, it's always about more than just the sport you're playing. This is a p two pictures of Hingham High School teams partaking in um, an event we call Slash of Trash, which is a competition that takes place at Hingham High among sports teams. It's designed to reduce waste in the cafeteria during lunchtime. And not only is this a great way to help the environment, but it's also a super fun and friendly way for teams to work together and collaborate outside of their sports events. This is the boys hockey team and the girls dance team. It's a really fun um, event we have at the high school. And then we also had a stellar year in fundraising for sports. Uh, we had the girls volleyball team raise over $4,000 for the Side Out Foundation in October, which is a huge accomplishment for that team. And then we also had the soccer team raise a great amount of money, number unknown, um, to the SNAP or the Special Needs Athletic Partnership Soccer Program. So it's really just awesome that at Hingham, the teams go more and get more involved with the community. In all, I think that the athletic program at Hingham offers an incredible variety of athletic opportunities in almost every sport imaginable. We've achieved an 80% participation rate, which is way above the norm, and I think that reflects our community's strong and growing engagement with the athletic program. Alongside all of these victories, we've also 
achieved a very high level of success, which is evidenced by the Holmes Award, which we were awarded for the fourth consecutive year. And this prestigious award is given out every year by the Boston Globe to the team in each division with the highest combined winning percentage in all varsity sports. Hingham has won this for the past four years, and I think that that uh, can claim the level of consistent excellence that Hingham Athletics brings each year. So I know I'm proud to be such an amazing and established program, and I'll hand it over to Evan to talk more about some school spirit at Hingham. Uh, before I start, I'd just like to mention that Caroline left one part out of her uh, slideshow. It was that she was not only a player on the girls' soccer team, she was the captain of the girls' soccer team. So we just give it up for Caroline, please. Thank you. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Evan Doherty, and I'm here today to talk about the hockey team and winning the Malloy Sportsmanship Award, the best sports moment at Hingham High School, the Red Army, and what school spirit has meant at HHS this year, and overall Hingham High School stewardship. Malloy Sportsmanship Award. Our head coach, Tony Messina, texted us a week after the season ended, telling us we won the award. Some teammates were actually not aware of what the award was because we haven't won it since 2017. I knew the award beforehand, and I knew it was a very prestigious award to win, so I was very proud of the team. This award, for those that don't know, goes to the team that shows the most sportsmanship throughout their season, something that I think gets overlooked with all the winning we do at Hingham High School. But something that I think we should all be very proud of is the pride we slash all other HHS teams carry with us throughout the season. So yes, we do win lots of games, but it is such an honor to win this award for Hingham and for our school. Best, bo best sports moment of the year. Hingham every year has so many great moments in sports. This year, we have had a bunch. I'd like to highlight some of my favorite. Liam McBride getting 1,000 points on senior night and the entire school being there to show support. Girls soccer winning the state championship, and one of my personal favorite, boys hockey beating number one ranked Catholic Memorial at home in front of a packed student section. Uh, lots of championship banners raised in the Hingham High School gym for many previous years of dominating sports. But my personal favorite, I think Mr. Swanson can attest to this as well, is the National Unified Champion School banner we raised this fall. It was an absolutely packed gym. The student section was packed as many fall sports teams, both JV and varsity, stopped by before games and, practice, and practices to witness history. This was us raising the banner. I'm just going to read off the definition of a National Unified Champion School. A Unified Champion School receiving national banner recognition is one that has demonstrated commitment to inclusion by meeting 10 national standards of excellence. These standards were developed by a national panel of leaders from Special Olympics in the education community. As you can see, Mr. Swanson tweeted, lots of banners hanging in the HHS gym, none matters more than this one. And that's a picture of the banner. And I think this really goes to show the special community we have in Hingham High School. Um, our athletes and special needs athletic partnership has been so important for us in so many ways here at Hingham. I think the highlight of both my day and Caroline's day is going to see our fellow teammates in the rise room going from C block to D block. Working with kids in unified sports in the Special Needs Athletic Partnership has translated into friendships off the court. Some of the awesome things, awesome things we do together is go for ice cream, practice basketball, and of course, fundraising for our teams. I'm not sure if anyone stopped by Atlantic Bagel the other day, but we were having too much fun raising money. We were doing things like dance-offs, gritty-offs, sing-offs, and overall, it was an awesome experience. And then I'd just like to highlight uh, my good friend, Jack Renna, after fundraising all day Saturday, he had the idea to go Sunday morning to Atlantic Bagel to fundraise. And I'm very proud to announce that we raised over $1,100 Sunday morning on Easter. And then, of course, for me, the people involved in Unified Sports are what makes my experience and so many others so memorable. In school spirit in the Red Army. As a senior, our class lost a lot during COVID. So we thought to ourselves, what way can we make up for it? Myself and a couple of friends decided the best way to do this was to go off what other schools have done in past years and make an Instagram. Red Harmony was the name we chose and it just stuck. It was very intimidating, we thought. We posted about what we were, we posted in our first post what we were going to post, be posting about for the year. Posted for games, posted for events, posted for general HHS stuff like fundraisers, uh, musicals, etc. They started off with football games and posting about different themes. As you can tell, the games will get packed. 
whether it was volleyball or football on a Friday night in the fall, girls hockey or boys basketball on a Tuesday night in the winter, all games would be filled with students ready to cheer on and support their teammates. So many great moments at HHS every year in sports. Like when we beat BC High in soccer with five minutes left, beating Duxbury in overtime in hockey and lacrosse, and of course, Liam McBride getting 1,000 points. He was the first to ever do it at Hingham. And all these moments are so much better when they're back by loving and caring student section. Whether it's kids in costumes, business suits, or painted their whole body red for a state championship game, Red Army is there for it all, and I think all athletes can agree how cool it is to play in front of their hometown and fellow students. And then stewardship. I'd like to start off by talking about stewardship by reading the definition. The job of supervising or taking care of something such as an organization or property. In Hingham, as we all know, we have a very caring and supporting school community. And then I'd like to take this time to gaslight Class of 23 for a second here. Class of 23, I think, exemplifies this every day. My mom always brings up how, how of all her five kids, our class is just different. Mr. Swanson and I actually talked about this at the MR8 road race last weekend, how he feels we have a lot of great student leaders that a lot of younger classmen look up to. And I feel our class is a great example to younger grades because of how engaged in our school community and how active we are. But most importantly, I am so proud of the inclusivity and, wel and how welcoming we are to everyone at Hingham. Thank you. Do you want to? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you to the students. And yes. I know we were missing some pictures, but you did a great job. That technology doesn't always work. It's not always in your benefit, but you pivoted amazingly. So we are super proud. You did your class, your fellow students very proud in your school. Um, and really highlighted all the great things um, that Hingham High School has to offer the students. So we thank you for being the spokespeople tonight, um, and thank you for highlighting all that the school has to offer. Yes, thank you. I would just add that um, listening to you tonight, I'm always incredibly impressed by our students from kindergarten through high school. I mean, you could not have paid me money when I was in high school to get in front of a group of people and talk as eloquently and as passionately as you did. Um, and I'm so glad that you brought up the word stewardship. Um, it's a word that we've been hearing a lot of lately across town as we come contemplate the override um, and hear more about that. And I hope when folks are watching this and hearing these meetings that this is it this is why we need the override we need to continue this terrific work that is being done in our schools the um the way you students are embracing inclusivity and the arts and athletics it's it's inspiring and i just hope that everyone in town can see this and remember why we're all here right we're all here to take better care of the place and leave it a little bit better than we found it so thank you for your efforts doing that at hingham high and the hingham public schools and if you can get that Red Army on April 29th to come to April 28th or 24th and 29th, if you're of a voting age, love to see you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. All right. Now we have to go back to the regular stuff. All right. Um, we have some minutes to approve. Yes. Um, okay. I will make a motion to approve the minutes of the school committee meeting held on March 27th, 2023. I will second. All right. Do we have any discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Those are approved. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the school committee school committee meeting uh, held with the advisory committee on March 14th, 2023. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And I will make a motion to approve the minutes of the March 20th, 2023 override public information session. March 30th. Oh, March 30th. Sorry, I went wrong. 30th. All second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, those are approved. Um, questions and comments. This is the part of the meeting where we encourage and welcome community engagement about items not on tonight's agenda. Before I Read that before I read that very long thing, there's not very many people here, so I'm guessing anyone here have anything for public comment? Jen, no, I mentioned it online? Wasn't the no. last one. No. 
All right. Um, okay. Um, do you want to do a report first? Do you want to do the? All right. Um, in an effort to honor our educators who are here tonight to talk about field trips who do not want to sit through this entire day of the new unfinished superintendent reports, all the things. We are going to move new business up first, or right here, um, to, if I, unless I'm putting anybody on the spot. <laughs> um, so let's move to 10.1, which is to discuss a trip to London in April of 2025. And after the Hi, everybody. Oh, it's so nice to see all of you. Uh, as I look out, I not only see former students, colleagues, uh, but I can name all of the children of the people on our school committee. Um, as I said, my name is Mo Fish, and I'm the drama teacher and director for grades 7 through 12 here in town. Um, and I'm here tonight with Alicia Policia to uh, seek approval for a trip to London in April of 2025 for the HHS Drama Club. Um, the dates of this trip would occur over the April break, uh, seven days in total. And as I said, would be open to the members of the HHS Drama Club in grades 9 through 12. Uh, and I'd like to offer this, uh, if it goes successfully on this uh, maiden voyage, as an every fourth year alternative to the New York City trip that we offer every spring. Uh, the hope is that every student would be able to attend this trip once over the course of their high school career. This travel opportunity is modeled after a very impactful trip I was fortunate enough to take as part of a long-term London theater seminar in college, just on a shorter time frame for our high school students. London is a city whose lifeblood is theater. It's advertised on every city bus, in every tube or subway station, and valued in a way that I had not seen before that trip. Uh, aside from the West End theater scene, which is the Brit equivalent of Broadway, um, we'll see the impact of many fringe festivals, uh, British pantomime, and the strange phenomenon known as lunchbox theater to widen the view of what successful theater can look like. Theater is a vital part of the culture of the place in a way that rivals no U.S. city, not even New York City and Broadway. Our plans for travel would include backstage tours of some of the oldest theaters in London, the Drury Lane, uh, the Old Vic, the National Theater, and the New Globe Theater, workshops in theater practice and design, a visit to Shakespeare's birthplace in Stratford-upon-Avon and the home of the Royal Shakespeare Company, and of course, lots of evening performances and London, London sightseeing must-haves like the Tower of London, Buckingham Palace, St. Paul's Cathedral, and the Houses of Parliament. It is my hope that students will appreciate seeing theater through a wider lens and delight in its prominence in London culture and varying what we consider to be the pinnacle of the Broadway musical that we celebrate every year with our New York City weekend. And then turn it over to Alicia. Um, so Alicia Policia, um, I am here for more of the logistics side of things. You have all seen me before up here um, requesting a uh, field trip. So um, I've worked through Grand Classroom before. So um, I am that part of this team here. Um, so we are traveling with Grand Classroom, um, who I just went on uh, the trip to Costa Rica during February vacation with students on um, and had a wonderful experience with them. That was the first time actually using them. And I am happy to say that it went very well um, going to Costa Rica with um, that company. Um, so we are happy to use them again. Um, just a couple of things I know um, you all like to hear about um, is there are options for um, travel insurance through Grand Classroom, lots of different options. Um, the highest level being um, a refund up to 24 hours before departure if you choose to um, select that option. Um, at the moment, luckily, knock on wood, COVID is a little bit in our past. Um, so not worrying too much about any COVID restrictions at the moment. Um, but if we do get approved and we do go in April 2025, obviously that is a little while from now. Again, fingers crossed, we don't have to deal with any of that. But if there are any changes in regulations, uh, Grand Classroom would be attuned to that and would let us know if we do need to um, deal with any vaccination or health requirements. Um, and then the other just kind of big thing um, is financial assistance for the trip. Um, so a couple of things that the Drama Club does, um, and we do this for the New York trip as well, um, for the musical, any ticket sales or ad sales for our playbill, um, the students can get a portion of those for um, to go towards their trip. Um, another thing we're thinking about, especially because this is a bigger trip, it's going to be a more expensive trip, um, we're thinking about um, doing an actual 
trip specific fundraiser for the students that they could be a part of. Um, just throwing around different ideas, but trying to come up with something that students could participate in to help um, defray the cost of the um, trip because it is going to be um, a little bit more expensive where it is seven days in London as opposed to a weekend in New York. Um, the other thing is Grand Classroom does have a few things sort of within their company. There are payment plans for students, um, so they are able to <coughs> space out their payments. And we are hoping that by doing this fairly early, we'll give them more time to know that this is a trip that's coming in 2025 so they can start to do those payment plans and maybe make smaller payments more often. Um, so ideally, we can get that going. Um, the other thing is Grand Classroom does offer um, a website um, for the students that they can ask for donations. So thinking about if there are holidays or birthdays or things like that, that you may want to um, ask for a contribution to your trip through Grand Classroom, they can um, get donations that way as well. And the last thing is if there is any, if sort of all of those options have been used and there are still students who are unable to go, um, we are lucky that Drama Club does have um, some funds that we can use for that um, if there is anybody who's kind of gone through all the avenues and still are unable to um, make it work, we can kind of talk with them confidentially um, and do our best to make it work for them if they want it to go. So I think that is it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It sounds like an amazing trip. Um, questions? Um, I saw Lunchbox Theater when I was just there a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it, this seems like an amazing trip. I mean, there is a lot um, jam-packed in here, so it's an amazing opportunity for students. Um, I do really appreciate the, um, sounds like the extra efforts going into fundraising for it and ways to offset the cost because it is one thing I think that this committee is often just cognizant of is making the trips equitable for um, you know all students because it's great travel opportunities um, for students to see the world. My kids benefited from going on a few themselves. Um, so appreciate the efforts that go into getting fundraising going. Um, anything else? With that, I would take a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the proposed student trip to London in April of 2025. And second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You're all approved. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, 10.2 is a trip to <coughs> Belize in April of 2025. And that's appropriate. Hi everyone, thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Laura Malerby and I'm a Spanish teacher at Hingham High School. I am five days away from heading off to Argentina with uh, nine of our students and I'm very excited. So thank you for allowing me to be here to propose a trip also during April vacation 2025, but to Belize. Um, while a lot of the trips that I have run with, this will be my uh, 10th, no, 11th year working with EF, the company I'd be going through. Um, while a lot of the destinations that I prefer to go to are Spanish speaking in nature, um, the itineraries that I tend to choose hopefully are jam packed with interdisciplinary um, you know, curriculum and knowledge. We, Alicia and I went to the Galapagos and we did a lot of um, biohundred like nature with the fishies a lot of a lot of there's a lot of outdoors things happening there um but i chose this belize trip for a couple of reasons this one is six days in length substantially shorter the price point is about two thousand dollars less than um a lot of the other trips that we've offered in the past uh specifically this argentina one coming up is nine days so you can see the length is um and the price reflects that as well but the itinerary does not compromise um this one as i mentioned the um, Hingham High, we have a diverse course offering, and so the itinerary, which I'll list off in a minute, um, really correlates directly with our history courses, Spanish, ceramics, foods and consumer sciences, science, fine arts. So this itinerary to Belize um, has a lot of, it's very rich in historical, cultural, and linguistic enrichment, and that's why I really liked this itinerary. Um, we would explore Maya agricultural sites, a temple, um, learn to make Maya pottery, traditional recipes, go to a cooking class, um, visit caves, and <laughs> participate in a garif garifuna drumming lesson, um, as well as learning about Belize exports, um, 
and cacao, visiting a chocolate farm, what does that whole process um, involve? Going to an organic farm, which is so important to our students um, and our climate here in Hingham to learn about sustainable agriculture. And, um, and then they can receive college credit upon completion of the tour. Like I think there's a lot of things that this trip in particular really hits and I'm very offer, uh, excited to potentially offer this to our students, um, especially because it is a, it is a, um, you know, at a lower price point, but a short in a shorter trip, but still very fulfilling. Um, a lot of this will sound very familiar, as is Grand Classroom and EF are competitive. Um, what is that called? Companies. They offer very similar. You know, the twenty four hours in advance um, uh, travel protection. The website donation fundraiser page is available. Um, Again, like I said, this will be my seventh trip with EF. Uh, so I'm very well versed in all of the ends of the extremes of what could happen. And um, I, I go back to using this company uh, for a reason. I believe in their product and their um, travel, nothing against Grand Classroom. I would go on their trips as well, um, but it seems to work. And so um, I'm thinking, what else would you like to know? Is, do you have any questions for me on this particular company or tour? Thank you for your consideration. Yes, awesome. thank you. Um, no questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't even uh, tell you who it was offered to. Sorry, it is open to any student grades right. nine through twelve. You don't have to have a language requirement, um, you know, or level fulfilled. You can any student um, in grades nine through twelve can go. Uh, but of course, the the hope is that you know cultural immersion, especially if you are a Spanish uh, student learning Spanish, you could. Um, further push yourself to utilize uh, outside of the classroom and actually right in the Mayan temples. That would be really cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, well with that, I will. I will make a motion to approve the proposed student trip to Belize in April of 2025. I will second. And we have a discussion. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. You are approved as well. Thank you so Thank much. you <laughs> very much. Um, all right, we're gonna um, we'll go back. We're gonna have uh, let's do ten point three to discuss a waiver for girls lacrosse. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to be here again tonight. Um, it was great to see that the high school showcase there. Even though I am biased, I think I'll give the elementary folks the the edge. But I think it was great for you to be able to see those. Transcendent leaders. Those are great young people you got to hear from tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, on a much less exciting note, I'm here to talk to you about an eighth grade waiver for junior varsity participation with our girls lacrosse program. Uh, we had our numbers a little lower than we expected. Uh, and in the memo, I've listed to you the process that we went through to get gain approval with the district athletic committee after receiving our Patriot League approval. So we have uh, 21 varsity participants this spring with the girls varsity lacrosse program. 12 high school age junior varsity participants and we have now five eighth graders participating with the junior varsity program only. Any questions? Just one. Yeah. Any um, high school students who are cut from any other teams? No. Okay. Thank you. That is a condition of a waiver, okay. by mm -hmm. the way. But I, I appreciate that. that. Oh, that's yeah, good. I appreciate the question. Okay. okay. Thanks. That's good to know. All right. Uh, any other questions? I'm assuming no freshman team is there. No. Any commission? I'll make a motion to allow for the five eighth graders to participate on the girls JV lacrosse team. And I will second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Aye. night. Thank you. Thanks, right. you too. Poor Mary Andrews. Of course, we're going to let you go next. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just table this one till the end? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. No uh, exactly. All right. Well, thank you for being here to re give us a report on the new elementary reading program. Adoption. Yes, this, this is long time. In the this making. has been a long time in the making. Yes, this feels like. Uh, the end of a long journey, our own marathon that came a week early. 
Um, so sure. So this process started our own. Um, the the journeys program that we currently use is being sunsetted um, at the end of well at the end of this year for us, but largely because the online platform is no longer accessible and then they're no longer publishing. So uh, we started this process over a year ago. Knew it was coming. Um, during COVID and had, you know, uh, realized that that was going to have to move to the back burner um, for piloting things while we were reinventing school. So um, what we did do is collect a number of volunteers who were um, approximately 24 teachers, reading specialists, special educators who volunteered to help us last spring with our research and adoption portion of our adventure. Um, and through sort of um, preliminary surveys and, um, conversations with what was happening in other districts, the expertise of our reading specialists, some of whom had worked with other districts or for the Hill Literacy um, Foundation. We, that research and adoption group, and I'll give you those names at the end of the slideshow, um, whittled it down to these five um, programs. And we met every other week throughout the course of last spring um, and that, in, and winter into spring, start in February. Um, that involved vetting all the products, ordering samples of all the products, um, meeting with the vendors, having them come in to present on our Monday afternoon meetings, and then Zooming with teachers who were actually using the programs as we started to make our decisions. We were um, vetting things against the Curate reports through DESE and through Ed reports. Um, and at the end of that process, we knew that we had two programs that we were interested in piloting. And those were My View, which is a um, Savas product, and um, Interreading, which is an HMH product. This past first semester, um, we, oh, I ruined the surprise, Interreading. Um, <laughs> so we, this uh, first semester, we piloted My View. Um, this second semester, um, Interreading, we started in January. Uh, it emerged right away as our front runner. Um, the, the final surveys that we just collected last week, all based on the, um, performance level indicators from the curate reports. Um, it was far and away the consensus that this was the program that the whole, we had a new team, a pilot team come in in the fall. A number of members crossed over into from research and adoption and stuck with the pilot. Um, and again, we went through the process of meeting every other Monday afternoon, meeting with the vendor, having more sort of intense PD where they could you know, answer questions as they were moving through. We made the intentional decision not to pilot two programs at the same time because in our experience from the last time through which i was just observing as laney silver shepherd them through that time it really seemed like people who you get attached to the program that you're piloting and then it came down to sort of at the end when they just had to debate which ones they wanted it was it was hard to you know convince people that no really the one that i did you'd love it better than the one you did so um so we took this approach and settled upon into reading just recently um sorry you should give me a minute to show you oops can i go backwards no maybe e okay um that on the last page was uh the review of um the curate report and you'll notice that it had all um top scores except the the um hourglass and all the programs we were vetting had the hourglass and that's the impact on student learning and because these programs are all so new that we were vetting we don't know that yet and that and that's just sort of the way that the programs work because if you wait long to adopt them then all of a sudden they're not offering um the most new sort of resources that we have in online components. So that is, oh, good trick, thank you. Um, <laughs> so, okay, okay. Um, and here are the Ed Report scores that we have. Um, also, all in meets expectations. There is no exceeding expectations, so we're not, we're not settling. Um, so, uh, and, and this was part of the reason that we felt confident even moving forward with the two pilots. Um, is any reading program perfect? No. And if we all want to quit our day jobs and invent one, I think we would be gajillionaires. But um, the places where we felt most confident to remediate gaps that we saw, and I, you know, to be upfront about the fact, and I think it's in your packets about the um, diverse voices and authentic texts. Um, 
it's on the next slide. I'll, I'll talk to you to, to, the, to that point for a minute. But sorry, I thought that was coming first. Um, you'll notice that the big push, especially for our K-2 teachers, and we were looking for something that would satisfy everybody K-5, through five, which comes with its own challenges because the priorities get a little bit different as you move from foundational skills and you know learning to read and reading to learn. Um, but we have our five core pillars of science of literacy, which the team has been very um, happy with how those are met with the many, many, many resources that they have almost an overwhelming number um, and then sort of supported by um, background knowledge concepts building the type of text they offer and a writing program full disclosure we like what we're doing with empowering writers and it's working and we're going to be largely staying with that with some supplemental smaller pieces with um, the writing program is uh, kind of short money it's not it's nothing comprehensive like this so um, we'll still be using the weekly writing lessons but for the process pieces we're finding that um, empowering writers the plus of that has always been the way that it dovetails with the secondary program and moves students to be in a place that that's easily adaptable when they get to the middle school um, we also like that it works really well with the workshop model that we have using in our classrooms for our literacy block. Um, tons of supplemental resources and differentiated resources for our MTSS program. Um, small group work, plenty of offerings for um, help with push-in support and as we differentiate with our um, tier two groups um, and tier three groups, there's the that was actually one of the biggest differences that they found between this program and the one we had um, piloted in the fall. I would say the other big plus here that they found was the um, the real in, the intuitive nature of the online platform and what they're able to do both from the teacher view of ed, which is the online platform, as well as the student interface, which was much less clunky and it was just able to make that classroom experience much smoother. Um, this is just sort of how they're set up. They're three-week modules for each unit, and then every week comes with just, like I said, almost an overwhelming amount of resources, which can be a nice problem to have, right? But a lot of the time, but the pilot team has been sifting down into what, you know, what exactly we really need and want for our students. What did I do? Um, okay. These sort of blurbs on the left, or this is from sort of their PR slide. So when I say I searched everywhere for these readings, I didn't, they did. Um, so when we look at um, the type of, uh, this is a, just a snapshot of the ed online resource, and then there's a gajillion pages with each grade level, but um, it interfaces really smoothly with Google Classroom too. So that's pretty easy for the three to five teachers to assign and, and monitor um, what their students are doing. But um, one of the other things that teachers liked about both products, and this is sort of new for reading programs, new-ish, is that the student editions are um, consumable. So they'll get a student book with each uh, module, so three weeks worth of work with all the materials, including the core reading text, the anchor text, supplemental text, and, and um, any sort of writing exercises or grammatical exercises that, uh, that accompany the readings are all in that book. So it, you'll, parents will start to see that those books will come home every three weeks-ish um, at the end of each module. Um, so that's a little bit different, but teachers like it better and students like it too because it's exciting to them that they can annotate right in the book and learn those annotation skills that are really important. Um, this is what I was going to mention before. They, you know, they pride themselves on uh, authentic texts and diverse voices. Um, I would say that that is a place that even when we first started to vet the programs last year, curates. Uh, benchmarks, their proficiency indicator for uh, culturally responsive text has been refined. Um, and so when we, uh, um, and I would say that interreading is right in the zone, if not better than most for this benchmark, better than probably all the ones we looked at in, in sort of outside um, research done on the different programs. Um, but there's room for improvement. And, and I think that um, we're on that in terms of already working with uh, Michelle Romano from science and especially history as ways of uh, the history standards have been redone and looking at the ways that we are selecting those readings to sort of um, supplement the voices that we'd like to, you know, know that we need to hear more from. Um, but uh, I, I think when we read 
Is it a concern? Yes. When we read sort of, yeah, there are voices, but you know, they're not in every module. Um, we're looking at how to make sure they do occur in every module. It's that part of the literacy block, science block, social studies block. Um, but I think it is worth reassuring you, which is not a great word, I guess, for the fact that Sally, but truly none of them do. There's not one that we skipped over because it was so great at being culturally responsive. So um, so that is, you know, an area. And it's interesting, right? Because these reading programs, you buy a five-year license and they, already it's a few years old because you don't adopt until you've piloted. And so you're not adopting the minute it's published and already things are changing. And we've seen that in the secondary world too. And it's easier to change in the secondary world where we're not looking anymore at, you know, we don't have texts representing diverse voices that are only about oppression and resilience, right? That we know that we have been moving in the direction of also showcasing joy. And, and it's easier to catch up when you're switching out for a new novel or title and you know what you want to change and teach and harder when there's a program that you're adopting and, that, and that's sort of set in stone at least for five or six years. So um, we do know that. We are on that. The teachers are, uh, when we did our preliminary survey, that culturally responsive um, text was in the top um, four of the you know 30 that we surveyed about what you really want to have in a reading program from all the teachers in the district. So it, it's um, it, it's true that we um, know that that's an area that is part of our plan for supplementation. I'll show you the PD schedule that we have. Um, coming up and when the whole the 75 percent of the teachers who weren't in the pilot program are learning how to launch with the program the other 25 percent will be working with the reading team and monica matthews has been really helpful our elementary writing specialist and working district-wide school to school to school to make sure that we're um getting our um best sort of overall picture of a pacing guide that incorporates novel studies that we can hand select and you know not necessarily use module 11 and 12 because one's a um, narrative um, fictional exploration and one's nonfiction, and we'd rather reserve those three week periods for other points in the year where we know we want to supplement a different way in addition to other short stories um, one of the other bonuses that the teachers liked is the note-taking strategies taught in the older older elementary grades is uh, Beers and Probes Notice and Note, which is something we use at the middle school too. So that um, makes for a nice smooth transition for a note-taking program. Um, we also have, I've heard from Diane Valley, one of our multilingual um, educators in the district that she reviewed the program and was really impressed by this option too. There's a um, for ELL support for um, for Spanish speakers only, but um, but it's a it's a pretty quality program, especially for those um, students that we have that are brand new to English language. This is the PD plan that we've had approved with the company that will be rolling out as soon as May third for. Um, the, like I said, the 75% of the educators in the district who weren't part of the pilot program. And in those dates that are blue and green, um, when the new, edu new to the program people are meeting and getting their training from the um, inter-reading, they're meeting with K-1 um, at the same time, 2-3 at the same time, and 4-5 at the same time, because we found through this process that that targeted instruction from a presenter is much more helpful than a K person having to sit through the five person's questions and vice versa. So that's been a nice way that they've accommodated our request for more targeted PD for next year. And during those times, the 30-ish, um, including reading specialists, 32-ish um, people on the pilot team will be meeting to work on refining those pacing guides, inter interdisciplinary um, connections we're working with uh, michelle romano it's a little harder to move the order of history <laughs> we tried um but in order to make it work with how we want it to work with our reading program um but, but andy's still so linear um and, but science we have a little bit more flexibility with so we're moving some of those units around so that they complement um what's happening in in their interreading scope and sequence um and so during those times, that 25-person pilot team starting on May 3rd will be working on those bigger picture uh, scope and sequence, interdisciplinary work, um, culturally responsive text supplementations as needed to those modules who have um, fewer offerings. Um, this is 
the list of the huddled masses who helped with this. <laughs> this is my, not just my idea, um, slide. So we had all those people helping on the research team last spring from February through June-ish and doing some summer work to learn the um, online modules from my view. And then these were our pilot team members this year um, who worked on vetting the two main products for us and coming to what I would say is a really unanimous decision. So um, I think that is it. And away we go. It's a, been a busy year. Yes. I just wanted to thank Mary and her team um, for it was a very time intensive process, a very thorough process. And this is the first of many um, presentations that we'll be giving um, about uh, the new reading program, including um, we did contract with, um, the, 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 uh, reached out to the vendor um, to offer some community um, outreach in the fall. Um, and there'll be other um, different um, events uh, occurring in the fall around the science of reading and the new program. It's September 12th at 7 o'clock. We'll 12, do a half hour presentation for the community via Zoom. Yeah. And then um, we have reserved some other PD sessions with elementary leadership. And they'll certainly be getting updates in their newsletters and things in their literacy nights. I would add two commonly asked questions. One, is it scientifically research based mm -hmm. to reading practices? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and we added in your packet um, some information, the curate report that indicates that it meets those criteria. Um, there are other reports that um, Mary spoke about, Ed, the Ed reports, that would say this is aligned to the best research around teaching of phonics, um, vocabulary, and reading comprehension. That's a commonly asked question. Um, another question that came up last week at the special education and, um, subcommittee was what happens to the implementation of the reading program if the override doesn't pass? Um, the funding for the materials is coming from ESSER funding. So it's a perfect use of that one-time funds to fund the materials. However, some of the supports that Mary is speaking about, including the writing specialist are um, certainly impacted by the override and um, sort of the resources are reading and ma math interventionists and all these personnel that sort of provide this comprehensive literacy block with MTSS and interventions is funded um, funded through some, is it, could be impacted um, if the override doesn't pass. So I think that's important to say there's some infrastructure and in pieces um, that are certainly impacted and necessary, and we're hopeful that um, are successful through the override process. Thank you. Questions, Jen? I yeah. have uh, one comment, one question. First, I just wanna thank you for the presentation, and, and I love how you had some teachers on both pilot programs, but not, but they weren't exactly the same. You had mm -hmm. a little bit of a, a balance there, so I think that that's great. Um, and just to double check, so it does provide the, the online audio Absolutely. text, it does read right. that out loud. Yes, so all like fully accessible. Um, and that was one of our other non-negotiables. And that was, there was, um, I probably shouldn't name it, but one of the programs that had sort of high ratings on its K through two foundational skills, but doesn't have an online platform. So we really didn't even explore it because of the accessibility issues. It sounds like it's pretty user friendly too. Yes, that was, I, I, I just, yeah, I, I just couldn't believe the difference in the teachers. It was like, oh, yes, night and day. So they're excited. I, there's arguably nothing more important than schools do than teach kids how to read uh, foundationally. Uh, so I really appreciate the thoughtfulness and the process that went into this. And uh, I think par parents are often very involved in the life of the school, but not so involved in the academic life of the school. And I think this is one area their parents are very mm. uh, sure. both knowledgeable, but the, there's a whole, you know, there's a right, whole series right. of podcasts. Sure, and sure. It's been yep. very in the news yep. lately. But it's also parents are really asking questions about, can I under, can I get into the platform? Can I experience this? Can I, you yes. know, really wanting to live this program with their kids? So I think there'll be a lot of options for really onboarding parents as well as Absolutely. onboarding the community. Every single feature of the program is also online. Yeah. So they, there's not going to be anything that they won't have yeah. access to. And so. I know you looked into, I'm not even going to ask about the specific special ed support. So, uh, no, absolutely. That was, I mean, that yeah. was, and um, we had uh, the, but the poor special educator on the research and adoption team, I think she probably wished she hadn't because all our questions were like, eh, <laughs> uh, what do you think? So she mm -hmm. became the voice of um, all the things. But uh, that was, that was a, a winning feature across mm -hmm. the board.
So excellent. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I think, and I think just to, I probably didn't uh, tout this team enough with a million names that they were so on it and so um, dedicated. And, you know, in that final survey, you know, when you ask that last optional comments box and people are like, yeah, fine. It was like just paragraphs and paragraphs <laughs> of details. And one of the presenters who, um, our PD person for into reading a few weeks ago, they were asking some really specific questions about the online platform and recommending to the tech group how they should arrange their folders. Like they were awesome. And, um, the, the, the PD person for into reading, she said, you, you guys are making me cry. I've just never seen anybody, the, the teachers take this much time to make this program work in a way that's perfect for them and their students and the way they put it together. So the, the time they've put in is is really been impressive and it made it very easy to sort of follow their leads and recommendations and just keep doing the legwork and stay out of their way. <laughs> so, And I was just gonna add, it works well with sort of the other sort of more uh, teach the programs that are more just focused on teaching to read like Orton Gilliam or Wilson or it full, those fold into it easily. Sh sure. So that that's again if we're you know full transparency some of the feedback from uh, and a really powerful um uh, first grade team that we had vetting the product, they were pretty precise about the place in phonics where they'd like to slow down and spend more time and that's mm -hmm. becoming part of the pacing guide. And and all of these big programs, with my view and in reading, have crosswalks with foundations that we will rely heavily upon just to make sure that, you know, we're not just moving through just to right. move through. So, you know, we really... Um, we trust their expertise and they, they can tell you exactly, you know, what, what sounds need more time and what mm -hmm. vowel combo and I, okay, <laughs> and that makes sense. So, but they're, they're on that too. Excellent. Yeah. Um, this, uh, the same question as Tim about how it kind of overlaid with some of the other reading programs. So I'm glad to hear that because I know um, you were well aware that that will be one of the big questions when it's introduced to parents about. Yeah. Uh, and I think and that, that our lower low you know k2 that that phonics phonemic awareness foundational skills that is their that is yeah. their bread and butter and their focus and that is what they were most honed in on and um and like i said the, the big one for whole class instruction would be the way that it ties to foundations and times that we need more time spent on that's the wilson um product the the um OG practices that many teachers are familiar with would, you know, are embedded in the classroom in, in, in different ways. The beyond tier three OG type of thing that you'd be talking to is more of a special ed service. Mm -hmm. So that, but it, it's, you know, all those phonics skills are embedded in a scope and sequence that makes sense. Excellent. And then just a question in regards to that, it was in one of the other reports you sent, but there was some comments about how it actually was so much curriculum, it didn't really fit into the number of school days. Right. So and it sounds like you're going to slow down some portions too. Yeah. So, how does so we're on it, work? especially because of the, um, with good reason, we're doing a lot of screeners to monitor mm -hmm. the progress, you know, and the dyslexia guidelines say that these are the ones that we have to have too. So, it's, it, you know, we have to find a way to fit all the things. And then um, the grade three through five teachers embed some time for MCAS practice too. So that's not a totally um, new experience for um, early test takers. So uh, the way that we're looking at it now in general, there are uh, 12 three-week modules, 36 weeks, which isn't going to work for any district because that's that's day one to day 180 right um but the first thing that we're looking at you finish the skills um by module 10 so week 30 and then um that we um module 11 and 12 so weeks 31 through 36 are dedicated at the older grades i think two through six for um a non-fiction study and a fiction study and those will be where the teachers they won't even leave them till the end of the year. We'll embed a novel study first semester and second semester because it's what they do already and they really like the novels that they not only have used but also are looking to use. They have a list they're generating with um, they've started some book groups. Grade three just started two new ones based on some things they had vetted with um, Andy Hoy last um, spring and summer. And then we'll be doing that for grades four and five too. And then we're also looking, there are just playing some modules that really don't need all three weeks. And that's what this, this um, <laughs> these poor people who signed on to be the pilot people didn't know that they're now the resident experts for everything. Um, so that's what they'll be spending this spring and some workshop time this summer. And then in the fall when they're meeting to learn how to use the program doing, um, figuring out places in the modules. There are a few modules that you really don't need the whole 
full three weeks and we just want that to be consistent district wide so that we can make sure that we're fitting it the the um, pacing guides that they're figuring out right now are really precise about you know module seven week three this will be where you are and this is after your three week novel study and um, so that's one of the things that we want to make sure we roll out with the program so that all four schools are um, in the same moving in the same direction but we've had to make some and we knew we would every program over plans um, some choices about where it's going to be the best place to gain a little time for the things we have to do so, thank you okay. okay thank you so much thank, thank you. you so much thank to the you. team that helped oh no they were amazing team. yes yeah. thank you great <laughs> group of educators on here thank you so much mary all right um Let's, shall we go back to the superintendent's report? Start there, go back to number seven. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Mary. Um, I don't have much this evening. We've nicely highlighted the high school um, adoption of the Renew Reading Program. There is an update in your packet from the South Shore Educational Collaborative um, just from our last board meeting. Um, their financial summary um, is looking more encouraging than it did at the last time. They're facing labor shortages, um, which then has, um, they have 16 students on the wait list, not because they don't have space, but because they have staffing shortages, which is then affecting their financing because they're collecting less tuition. Um, so they're actively continuing to seek out um, more ways to um, recruit more staff. Um, um, in order to both help their financial situation and as well as help districts um, um, be able to um, support um, additional students. Um, so you'll see some of information on their um, financials. We approve their FY24 budget as well. Um, you also have later on in the agenda um, a request to appoint um, myself as the um, um, as the representative to the board. Um, that vote is needed every year around this time. Great, thank you. Any questions? All right. Um, communications? Do you have any? Nathan and Alex, do you have any student communications for us? Um, there's two things. Um, I talked to the Friday show people and we'll be doing a uh, little TV appearance about town meeting and the election um, this okay. Friday. Mm -hmm. And we have the joint meeting this Wednesday. Yes. So that's mm -hmm. a little bit smaller because it's yes. busy time for everybody. Yes. I also will send the information, as I said, to Evan about the override to help get some student outreach. So those are the three things. Alex, do you have anything? No. No. That's okay. it. Great. Thank right. you. I think, Ness, you're going on Wednesday. Allie. And Allie. Yeah. Okay. Did you? Is there a Zoom? Zoom. Yep. Zoom. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you for doing that. Yep. I think the rest of us are at some meeting or another <laughs> that week. But it's we wanted to make night. sure. Yeah. It's a very busy night. Um, any other communications? No. Okay. Um, all right. Unfinished business. Um, we have a couple of policies. Jen, do you want to? Take us through those. Um, I'm, I don't know if you all sent an email, but I've sent the Word document just so we have any changes. And I, in your packet, there's the PDF. Mm -hmm. It does not reflect the change that we discussed at our last meeting when we're talking about policy ACAB. Okay. Um, what we added to that was just that the the very the last page on page four, we decided to add in the title of the person under mm -hmm. the parties to receive a complaint are as follows. Okay. And do we want to? And then my question to you all was: Do we want to include the name with the title or just the title? I think just, just the, the title. title. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's how so I have it. Change. Yeah. That's how I have it. So I just want to double check. And then since we did go through these, I just would offer if anyone has any questions. No. Nope. I'm assuming because these policies were mostly uh, pulled from Matt, the mask yes. policy that they they do not, mask puts them through their lawyers and we don't need to put them through our lawyers. Yes. Okay. No. Yes. And they also, they, they all kind of overlap and they follow all the 
the laws and the mass general law. So. Yep. Perfect. All right. Do you want me to just go through all of them and then we can go to the? I did have one question. Well. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed on this that the um, summary of the attached policy gets sent to parents and guardians, students. How do, do we? Do we send that out? Is that done? It's on? Done through the handbook. Through the handbook. Okay. Um, so the handbooks would have to be updated to reflect all of these policies. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. Yeah, Jen. Sorry. If you want to do go the next the rest. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is policy AC, which is non-discrimination policy, including harassment and retaliation. This one combines our current policies AC one and AC two, and it adds in a more um, descriptive it's a uh, definition for it add, well it adds in age familiar status and ancestry to the definition um has the exact same language as our policy ac1 it literally just like stuck it in the middle there <laughs> and the same as our ac so it's just a more in-depth definition and clarification. Okay. And then the third one is a brand new policy, JICK, which is harassment of students. It's very similar to the other two policies with the same definitions for harassment. Um, again, adding in age, familiar status, and ancestry. Um, it goes into employee to student harassment, student to student harassment. It follows the law to the T, Mass General Law. Um, and that's it. This is more just a general question mm -hmm. of, with the student student trust harassment, how does that sort of, some of the definitions are so similar, how would that overlap with the bullying policy? So the bullying how is How is student student harassment? I know obviously if it's a sexual mm -hmm. nature, it's harassment. Mm -hmm. How is, non-sexual student-to-student student harassment different than bullying? I'm not sure. Okay, okay. That makes sense. And then, and, but, and they, the retaliation is the same. For, like, the, they, the retaliation procedure would be in our bullying policy, and then that would be the same okay. as it is in this policy. Okay. Because the situation is so similar. I didn't oh, yeah. Were, you know? So those are the, those are the three. Any the three or the four? Do we? There's three. It was, it was a. It was combined. ACA is the same. Okay. So yes. AC and ACA are combined. Okay. Well, AC, ACA would. ACA isn't new. I think that one might have been a. Okay. A yeah. Typo. We don't have to do anything with ACA. Got it. Okay. That's the same as we have. So okay. What we need to approve is ACAB, AC. AC, and JICK. Okay. Got it. Okay, so I will start off. I'll make a motion to approve the updated school committee policy ACAB sexual harassment to include the proposed change of adding the title of the person to report to. I have a second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that passes. I'll make a motion to approve the school committee policy AC non discrimination, including harassment and retaliation. I will second. Okay. Further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, no opposed? Okay. And then I will make a motion to approve the school committee policy JICK harassment of students. I will second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, those are approved. Great, thank you. Um, and we'll make a note to <coughs> all those in the handbook, handbook that are relative. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we're back down to new business. Um, 10.5 is uh, the report from the Climate Action Committee. Um, so this is, we received the report the other day, and I, I mean, I think everybody got it. Yes? Mm -hmm. You read all. And I've read every page. I'm almost done. Um, <laughs> it's a lot. We, April 30th was the date they, yes. went, they were looking for comments back. Okay. All right. Um, anything else on that? Do you have anything for us to 
No, I apologize. I didn't get to finish it, but I was thinking it might be easier for you to review if I pull out the specific school sections and just send like a one pager with those pieces that are they they've already explicitly said directly impact the schools for people to respond to. Okay. Instead so of trying do, to call through all of it. Can even just, I just did a, I also did a search and document for schools. Yep, and just had it. Non education, educational market. If you do schools, <laughs> it pulls everything up. Schools okay, everything perfect. Up. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to do that if it helps people to kind of cross reference so you're not. I think one of the through. challenges we have to be honest about with the committee is also the financial impact. Mm -hmm. Yes. It mm -hmm. relies on a lot out of capital expenditure. Um, that we have not necessarily adequately um, funded through the town. Or so for. it requires some thoughtful collaboration with the town about how we're going to fund capital, these capital expenditures that are outlined here. It's an, an enormous expense, some of these, and important, extremely important, and long term could save, would save costs in utilities um and the right thing to do but also require um, a very thoughtful multi-year funding process um, that i think it would be important to say that somewhere to engage the town in some of that long-term planning yeah i agree and they did highlight a couple things um not all of them that were listed but some action items that were near term versus longer medium term and i think some of, some of the long and medium term things are a little bit out of our full control because it will depend on when you know new construction projects are done or renovations and they're not things that can be easily implemented currently so i think we can kind of note that too because i do think it takes some thoughtful long-term planning but also within those there was a lot of things that are already being done too yeah, and i think we should highlight they're, they're already complete already the lights. yes already done some of those we're already adding led lights in for adding in and projects and the recycling within the yep. schools is already being done so some of that is just continuing the work that's being done as opposed to something new even with the buses and electrical buses yeah you've well. already explored mm -hmm. um and we already have like one electric van that right. we're looking to put on our fleet this year and we got funding for a second one in capital if everything remains the same come end of this year so excellent keeping an eye our, our on grants Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they yeah. do. The sustainability coordinator is also, you know, aware of that and looking for things too that can cover some mm -hmm. of these. Yeah, I mean, some of the changes, for example, like we have on capital right now, in terms of new HVAC systems, like for the high school and others. Um, so it'll, you're right in terms of being thoughtful about how we make those updates and see if it's something that you know it is an affordability because even with the bus, the, van, the buses. We would like to go to electric on buses, but then these but the buses are so expensive right now mm -hmm. that it will require a big commitment on our part as well, right? Right. Yeah. So it's it's good mileage and seeing if it's going to be able to last exactly. and then the battery yeah. disposal, there's all kinds of issues there right. too. I mean, the sacrifices that the schools make and this need to be sort of commensurate with the sacrifices that the town is making with this as well. Like I'm, I mean, the electric buses is an example. I'm not super motivated to get electric buses when we live in a world where the car loops are going out into the streets to pick people up. Like it seems like doing a lot of work to make ourselves good, but doesn't really change the game in the town. So I think they're sort of, this is, this is a burden of the entire town, not just of the schools, which is obvious from the report. Right. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's we're focused on the schools. There's a lot in there that is townwide and we don't all need to get bogged down in you know, every single page of, of the report. But there are things pushing more bikes, more bike lanes, more bike racks to kind of across the town. So they do then feed into what happens within the schools, depending on how mm -hmm. deep we want to get right mm -hmm. now with comments. The other thing they are doing, and it's not fully reflected in it, is they're trying to um, cross-reference it to the town's master plan. So the, there are some things, and we might catch some of that within what's specific to the schools that doesn't match up with what the master plan you know, intends to do in the next few years and might be things we need to say, these need to be pushed out because they're just not feasible right now. Mm -hmm. Are they looking at our strategic plan as well? Um, they didn't specifically. I think they were hoping that we can catch things that don't okay. align with it. Yeah, and it was just my just initially looking through, over through it, 
I'm impressed with the amount of work that's mm -hmm. gone into it, and it's, it's really well thought out. Um, <clears throat> I was just thinking with the override coming, and this is probably not a comment we need to pass on because by the time we get there, we'll know when, when, one way or the other. But we're, we're kind of, if it doesn't pass, we're kind of going backwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you talk about uh, eliminating buses for some, certain grades, that's more cars on the road and more traffic and more pollution. And, um, and then, the, you know, not to, if we aren't able to move the Chromebooks into the operating budget, like that's really going to hamper what it's already hampering what we can do to add more things on top of it. And I'm in favor of doing all of these things, you know, <laughs> right. but it's, it's really, I mean, it, it's just, I was just kind of sad reading it and thinking about what the consequences would be, so. And I think that's good feedback that actually I should give them now. Because yeah. Because those are, you know, they're also thinking about the override, but in different contexts that they should be thinking about right. as they're looking at the information personally as well. Right. And so you have to cut costs. Yeah, a lot of these things will not be yeah. possible. Right. Yeah, going backward is the yeah is the tough thing to, to think about if this override doesn't doesn't pass. Um, any other questions or comments about this? All right. All right. Well, thank you, Ali. If you do want to put something, yeah, down, I'm happy it's just to do as that. easy. I mean, make it I, easier for everyone. It is long, but I. I'm, about lots of thirty percent through it. It's yeah. I mean it's inter I mean it's really interesting. Yeah. And it is sort of I think helpful to get the full picture. I mean even to Tim's yeah. point of not just what the schools can do, but is this commensurate with what everyone else mm -hmm. is doing and are the things yeah. we're gonna do they're not gonna help if other things aren't changing. <coughs> right. And it's all the town buildings and I yep. think that's where it's a little challenge because the schools have such a large proportion of the buildings yes. within town. Mm -hmm. in the town. Yes. So if we have additional comments, should we send them to you, to Allie? Like what is the yeah, what's time? easiest? To you, if you, do you mind? No, no, no. Okay, no. we send to Allie. Thank you. Yeah. And, are you and I noted what we said tonight, so you yeah. don't have to resend them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, awesome. Thank you. Um, all right, um, 10.6 is to appoint the superintendent of schools as a representative to the South Shore Collaborative Board of Directors, as Dr. Adams mentioned. Yeah. Um, so do you want to make a motion? Make a motion. <laughs> yep. Um, I'll make a motion to appoint Dr. Adams as the representative to the South Shore Collaborative Board of Directors for the 2023-2024 school year. I will second. Any discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That is approved as well. Easiest Thank you for <laughs> doing that. I know. Um, hopefully this is easy too, uh, to approve donations and grants. Do we have some more? Donations and grants. Yes. Are you, sure you going to take us through? So we have um, a list of donations and grants, actually, that the high school has pulled together. The high school PTO has provided to the high school. And um, as part of the, the policy to get those grants approved, um, we're beginning to make sure that we, we're doing so on a regular basis. And the high school is starting off that process with um, their list of grants that the PTU has granted to um, to the students and teachers of the high school. Um, there's a, a list in your packet of what those grants were, the purpose of the grants, and who received them. Um, and for Foster Elementary School, um, the, the PTU they was able to provide iPads um through one of the there's a program that the um that the cost of elementary school pto um does kind of does on our behalf where they um receive um funding from the arts program and in turn they're able to fund a lot of um, projects um for the, the foster school and one of the things that they've done is that they've used those funds to buy iPads, um, three iPads, as well as um, the Apple Care and the cases for those iPads as well. So we're just asking for your approval on those grants. As the weeks continue, we'll have more of those types of approvals for you to um, give your blessings. Um, so we'll just start off with those for now. Um, I think it is worth pointing out how fortunate we are to have these community groups, the PTOs, the AGF, the AJA, HSP, all the um, organizations that donate so generous, generously to the schools. I know I've 
heard some folks in the community, you know, saying, why don't we get more private donations? And besides the fact that it's a public school, and that's mm -hmm. not the way they were meant to be funded, but there is the, I mean, we do get very generous support from um, our various community groups, so. Yeah. All right, do you want to? Yeah, with that, I will make a motion to accept um, $9,105.63 in grants from the high school PTO the donated equipment, material, and supplies will become the property of Hingham Public Schools. I will second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I'll make a motion to accept uh, three iPads, Aye. iPad cases, and three years of Apple Care for each iPad valued at $1,211.97 in grants from Foster Elementary Schools PTO. The donated items will become the property of Hingham Public Schools. Second. I'll second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, those are approved. Thank you Thank so you. much. All right, um, 10.8 is to discuss athletic transportation bids and act as appropriate. Um, in terms of this bid here, um, in terms of what we've been able to do, what we have been able to do and what we continue to do is to have um, our transportation department cover more and more of our athletic transportation. And um, early in the year, and last year, one of the issues that we faced was um, actually having bus drivers that were available um, to do those athletic groups. And every now and then we have, um, at one, any one point in the year, we may have like several buses that are needed. Because for example, you may have a track team going in one direction, that needs about three or four buses and, and you know, maybe soccer or in the spring or another group of kids where there were several buses are needed at any one point in time. And when that happens, um, there may be cases where we'll need to use contracted buses. Um, that is not, that we're trying to whittle down as much as we can, um, but we just want to make sure that we have a contract in place so that if there is, for example, whatever a shortage on our point is of staffing, or if we have a case where we need several buses and we don't have the drivers to be able to provide the transportation for the kids' athletics, that we have this, this um, contract in place to be able to transport our kids to the different activities. Um, the contract also ensures that, um, that we don't get penalized if we don't use all of the miles um, that has been included in the bid okay. um, so that we can use you know, we, the, the minimum amount that we have to use is like a hundred and something miles which in even like one bus trip we can exceed that um, and so we're not penalized in any way for not using per student but um, at least we have the ability to use them when we need them mm -hmm. okay. so the, what I'm asking for here is just to get approval of that bid so that we can have that service available if and when we need it Okay. It's pretty com common practice yes. for the districts to see them yes, frequently. Definitely. Different buses. Definitely. Um, as part of the, the complete bid that we, the results that we received, they gave us a list of all the schools mm -hmm. that utilize them. <laughs> um, for some of our South Shore counterparts, they use them completely in terms of even busing their kids to school, not only for athletics. Mm -hmm. So um, we're fortunate in that sense that we have our own buses and we're able to provide transportation for ourselves for most of the other areas. And this is just like a surplus, so to speak, that we'll need sometimes when we're not able to provide that transportation ourselves. Yeah, I mean, we're very fortunate that we have the transportation department that we have. Definitely. Dr. Adams has mentioned it a few times. Yeah. That's where the costs have gone up with Definitely. so many other or um, districts this year and mm -hmm. we are fortunate that we don't right. we're not in that predicament um so yeah yeah um the, just one question about the bid what was the five thousand miles based on was just that was that so, just something that standard for that the well, contract so what we did was we um um this athletic department gives a listing of all the potential trips that they will they, they take on average mm -hmm. every year and based on that, um, Mary, Mary Ellen and ourselves went through the process of looking at how many trips will, pack, will our, our own transportation depart, department be able 
to cover mm -hmm. and at a minimum how much would we require we may require additional transportation for yeah. and that's how we were able to whittle it down to like about five thousand okay This is another area where if we make the investment, we end up saving on the back end. So That's if we right. were able to get the buses that we need, we, um, we could get the drivers and we've got a great transportation. So we save on the back end. Exactly. So that's, um, Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Keep pushing for that. Yeah. And can there be just a protocol or something in place that if we're, if we think we're going to exceed this amount mm -hmm. that you would let us know just right. If like all right. of a sudden some, we're like, oh boy, we're, it's December. I mean, we've already used four thousand right. of these miles, yep. so we had that. That would be great. Yeah. Right, definitely. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the bid from First Student Incorporated for athletic transportation um, for the remainder of the 2022-2023 school year, with an option to renew for 2023-2024 and 2024 through 2026 school years. Uh, transportation by first student will be used during the occasions that transportation department at HPS is not able to secure an adequate number of buses or drivers from the runs needed. And do we also need to authorize the school committee chair to sign the contract? Yes. Yes. And that motion will include authorizing the chair of the school committee to <laughs> sign on behalf of the school Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I will second. Right. Long-winded motion. <laughs> Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That is approved too. All right. Um, 10.9 to declare surplus materials and equipment and act as appropriate. So we have two sets of surplus materials this evening. The first one is the easier one of the two. <laughs> we have a truck. That we're um, that is rusting and old, over two like almost two hundred thousand miles on it. So we're going to declare this one as surplus, um, and just need your approval on that. And also, Katie will speak to um, the as we have um, new textbook program. We also have textbooks that we need to um, get rid of at the least cost to to hang them. So our, our process um, for deaccessioning textbooks is we do have a number of used booksellers um, that we have a relationship with. Uh, we reached out to all three and given the age of the Journeys program and again it, it was at, at the time it was aligned to best practices but given the evolving body of research um, uh, it is no longer um, a program desirable by other districts. So um, all three booksellers said that there is uh, zero value in um, the texts. And so we'll responsibly uh, dispose of them upon your approval. Okay. Middle school vampire? <laughs> <laughs> You're chaperoning, Tim. Uh, in my third year. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, thank you for those. Um, make you a motion? Make a motion? Sure. Yes. I'll make a motion to declare a surplus. Um, actually, let's go to the yeah, to declare a surplus Hingham Maintenance Department's 2005 Ford van. VIN number 1FTNE 24W85HB17058 and to authorize the Director of Business and Support Services to dispose of the van at the least cost to Hingham. I have a second. Great discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's approved. And I will make a motion to declare a surplus materials from the 2016 Journeys program as indicated in the attached listing and to authorize the Director of Business and Support Services and the HPS Maintenance Department to dispose of the books at the least cost to Hingham. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great. Yeah. Those are all set. Thank you. Um, all right, 10.10 .10 is to discuss school committee officer nominations for the 23-24 term, which is just amazing how fast that. it has come up. Mm -hmm. I know, I can't believe it either. Um, it's, I was thinking it was way too early, but I'm like, oh, no, it's not, because our next regular, so we have many a meeting, but our next regularly scheduled school committee meeting is May 8th. So this is our last sort of regularly scheduled full agenda um, school committee meeting before May 8th. So I just wanted to go through the process. Um, it's a self-nomination process. If you're interested in running for chair, vice chair, or secretary, um, fill out the form. I believe it was in the packet. 
um, and submit them back to Sherry. Um, and then at our meeting on May 8th, the um, we'll take, we'll have a vote on the um, positions. So send them to Sherry by? Send them to Sherry by? May 8th? Yeah, really by May 8th. <laughs> Just by May 8th. Um, maybe before that because we want them in the packet. So let's say May 1st. Yes. Um, and, and then you should only fill one out for yourself if you want to be chair, right? Yeah. Not to. For, you yes, can't you, sign it for other people. Correct. Right? Yes, you okay. only self nominate. <laughs> sure. Yes, you self nominate. That was just, that was just a gesture. I don't know. Yes, you self nominate. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a self-nomination process, yes. Um, and then when we vote, um, the senior member of the committee will, which is me, um, or, well, assuming I am reelected, um, <laughs> it will be me, and, um, and then the chair turns it over to the new chair. Um, all right. Um, yep. Should we officially time up the switch of the uh, student rep? With that, like, I could, we could just student advisory committee could just reelect, switch it to Alex, and then we give him the official title. Or we can just wait until June. I think wait until June because I think right. your rule is that you elect a new. Yeah, we should wait till after election. Yes, I think that. Yes. Okay. I think really Nathan should continue to come to meetings yes. until the and end of June. I want to be graduated. I, 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 I do love to be chair by June first. Yes, oh, yes, okay. the law says Sorry, by June correct. first. <laughs> yes, is it? Uh, yeah. So let, do it. Yeah. Do it for before June first. Okay. Um, side question. Actually, yeah. side comment. Uh, my name is spelled wrong. It's town meeting ward. God no. <laughs> Can you just bring your so old uh, block with it? it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I think it is. I think it must be a spell check. That I must be because I always get that spelling. It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. And here I was all happy that I remembered to put the student representative in the town, Lauren. This time sorry. It, it must be really shocking to find out in school committee meeting that you've been misspelling your name Man, your entire life. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry. Um, if I could yeah. correct it, I would. But it's it's still too late. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, apologies for that. So, for for the record, it is T E S L E R Nathan Tesler, our student representative. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, subcommittee and project reports. Uh, Ali, I'll start with you. Again. I got nothing to say. Cool. Okay. On Wednesday, last Wednesday, we had a special ed subcommittee meeting and we had uh, two parent surveys that we looked at. Uh, that one was the uh, tiered focus monitoring survey that's part of our every three years we get evaluated. The special ed pro department gets evaluated by the Department of uh, elementary and secondary education. And this is part of that process. Uh, so this was a survey of parents about special education that DESE did. Uh, and then the second survey that we did was actually done by uh, CPAC, the Special Education Parents uh, Advocacy Council. And they uh, surveyed their own members. Uh, it's really focusing on supplementing special education services with tutors, with advocates, with lawyers, with, I suppose advocates lawyers aren't supplementing services, but money that parents, what special education parents do. I think there was a lot of really good information with that. I shared it with everyone on the committee, both surveys. Uh, and I really will be the start of lots of discussions or lots of sort of uh, hard truths uh, that we had to look at about the relationship between special education parents and Hingham Public Schools, that I think that's a relationship that needs some healing uh, and some attention, and going on, especially as we're hiring a new director of student services. Um, so just making everyone aware of the, they're worth looking over those two sets of data uh, that I emailed out. And that's all I have is that meeting. The Hingham Middle School Council is scheduled to meet on April 24th, which is the afternoon before town meeting. <laughs> so, um, and salary negotiations, we met on March 28th with Unit B, which is the paraprofessionals, and on March 29th with Unit A, which are the teachers, um, to continue negotiations for our successor contracts. Um, we have a number of, or, so we're meeting this Wednesday the 12th to continue um, talks with Unit A teachers. 
Um, we have a number of meetings scheduled <clears throat> with both units through May and June. Um, I think we'd all love to ha have come to agreement before the end of the school year, but we wanted to make sure that we had these meetings scheduled in, in the event we need them. So. I attended the South School Council meeting, and that's all I have. Um, the Foster School Council meeting is coming up on April 27th. That's what we All right. Um, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, but um, many of us attended. Um, Anessa and I presented at the town hall um, forum regarding the override presentation. Um, it was pretty well attended. Um, there were lots of good questions. Um, it is was recorded, so if folks went to, I think it was recorded. Yes, yes it was. Yeah. Um, so if folks went to watch it, um, it's about an hour and a half long. Um, it's a great presentation describing what an override is, how did we get here, why do we need one, why it is important, what we stand to lose if it does not pass at town meeting and at the ballot. Um, and there is another presentation tomorrow night on Zoom uh, for anyone who missed the first one. Um, it will be a very similar presentation, um, but the questions obviously will be different because we'll have new audience members. So if folks can tune into that, that would be great. Um, our next meeting is April 24th at town meeting. So we will just convene on the floor of town meeting, um, hoping we can arrange as we have the past few years to have seats reserved for us so that we can all sit together in the event we need to um, discuss anything during the um, town meeting. Um, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for folks to attend town meeting if you are a registered voter. Um, if you are not a registered voter, you still have until April 14th to register to vote. Um, important to attend town meeting um, to make your voice heard, not only on the budgets, but also on many, many other items that are on the town warrant. The override, as we've mentioned before, also requires a majority vote at the town election on Saturday, April 29th. Uh, the polls are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. There is also uh, early voting available, or sorry, mail, vote by mail option. So sorry, not early voting, vote by mail option. If you are interested in obtaining an application to get your ballot in the mail, uh, you can go on the town clerk's website. You can call the town clerk's office. You can come into the town clerk's office and pick one up. Um, and you can vote um, by mail. Um, everyone has the best intentions on election day to get out and vote, but we often find lots of things can happen to derail a good Saturday. Um, so if you're interested in voting by mail, please um, check out the town clerk's website for more information. Um, so our next meeting is April 24th on the floor of town meeting. Um, we have posted or will post another meeting on April 25th in case town meeting goes to two nights. Um, then we will schedule a meeting for April 26th just to discuss the results of town meeting and to start um, discussing getting into the budget details because again we still do have to see the override passed at the ballot as well. Um, May 1st it's going to be a little bit trickier because if town meeting goes to three nights May 1st is the third night of town meeting so I think, Sherry, we're going to have to post for May 1st and May 2nd um, to discuss the um, results of the override. Maybe. Is that a likely thing? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. I, since I've lived here, here, lived here, I don't think we've ever seen a third night. Does it get two nights on? Oh, it, it has definitely. Third night yeah, one year. It did almost go to a third night one year. Um, I think it depends on how long the budget discussion is on. And the how, first night. How far up is the budget? The, the budget is pretty early on. First. So the budget will definitely be discussed. The first yes, yeah. that will be the first article night. Six and the thing before the there, we put it yeah. quickly. Yeah. So it's the sixth article, but the other things are pretty quick. Um, so, so for yeah. all our sakes, we can, <laughs> we don't have to have a third night, but we do. We do. Um, and then our next regularly scheduled meeting then is May 8th at 7 o'clock. And just uh, just want to emphasize again, Michelle, come on. No, the budget as we're talking about all these second, third nights that the budget is very, very early in the, on the first. Yes, first night. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Just, yes. yes, to yeah. clarify that. Yes, that will be that should be settled on the first night. That's right. Yes. Yep. Okay. Anything else from anyone? All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Anything you guys 
You good, Alex? Yeah. All right. Um, I will take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.